Howdy y'all, it's Bob here with Odin's Lock. I'm going to try to talk a little bit about uh, Locksmith Code of Ethics. Something that uh, you, know, you see a lot of YouTube channels out there that are locksmiths. I'm wandering around here, keep an eye on this cat. Anyways, they, they talk a lot about, they show a lot of stuff about uh, locksmithing and everything else. And, uh, you know, everyone has their own pet peeves, what they do, don't do, all that stuff. But, uh... Bottom line is, almost all locksmiths that have had any formal training have covered code of ethics uh, to some degree. Excuse me, I try to do this with one hand. And, uh, what's up, guys? He's a stray cat. He just lives with us. Anyways, you know, if you're a member of, like, uh, the Society Professional Locksmiths, uh, they kind of use the uh, Baltimore uh, Oath, you know, uh, the Baltimore Oath. It's, uh, at the St. Baltimore's. Uh, Bully Bell saw they kind of have their own little code of ethics, I guess. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, I'm going to have to be careful taking pictures of that because uh, you know, everything's copyrighted, which I don't know if, if it matters. I think if uh, you can share anything, it's probably the best stuff to share. You can pause your screen right there and read those. But uh, that's uh, the Bully Bell Science Institute of Code of Ethics and their rules for good business. You can pause it if you need to. And Aloha has their own. Uh, you know, you can go to aloha.us.org or just look up Aloha. Sociolosis uh, of America. Uh, every one of them has their own uh, code of ethics. But like the St. Baltimore's, Baltimore's, it's kind of like the Hippocratic Oath the doctors take. And uh, the St. Baltimore's, uh, he's uh, what they call uh, the patron saint of locksmiths. He worked as a locksmith in Lyon, France, and died in... Uh, 650 AD. I'm just looking at this stuff here. Uh, this oath uh, or code of ethics is patterned uh, after the Hippocratic Oath of the medical profession. And, and it goes to the extent of I do solemnly vow to that which I value and hold most dear that I will honor the profession of locksmithing, be just and generous to its members, and help sustain them in their service to humanity. And I'll, I'll post a, a, a picture of this, a copy of it. Uh, towards the end of the, the video and uh, that just as I have learned from those who preceded me I will instruct those who follow me in the science and the art of locksmithing and uh, the oath also goes to say that I will recognize the limits of my knowledge and pursue lifelong learning to better protect people and secure their property and that I will seek the counsel of others when they are more expert so as to fulfill my obligation to those who entrust me with their safety and security that I will not withdraw from my customers in a time of need that I will lead my life and practice my art with integrity and honor, using my knowledge and ability wisely. That whosoever I shall see or hear of the lives of my customers that is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep in confidence. And, uh, you know, it, it's a good oath, you know, and it, it goes on that I will disclose to all whom I serve what they must know to maintain their security and the means necessary to maintain that security. And that into whatever home or business I shall enter, it shall be for the safety and protection of the people and property of therein. And I will maintain the sacred trust, holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice. And above all else, I will serve the highest interests of my customers through the practice of my science and my art. That I will be an advocate for people in need and strive for the quality and their security. Now, while I apply my craft for the benefit of my customers in particular, I will always apply discretion in preserving the security of each and every member of the general public. And I now, in turn, to my calling, promise to preserve its finest traditions with the reward of a long experience and the joy of providing protection, safety, and security. I make this vow freely and upon my honor. And that's the pretty much the bottom arrow. So, and it's uh, you know you can find it online. Yeah. I, every locksmith kind of has their own thing that they, they kind of follow. Personally, there's things I kind of add into it that I do my best not to, uh, you know, badmouth other locksmiths. You know, even, you know, the ones that are new that I still don't know if they're legit or if they're a scammer. Uh, if I see any locksmiths that uh, I haven't seen before in my area, I usually try to, you know, uh, introduce myself. Uh, talk to them about the local associations, see if they're members of any of the, the bigger, greater associations. Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's 
better to try to bring people into the fold that are trying to do this kind of work for the safety of them and the safety of the customers uh, above all else and uh, to make sure you know they're they're legit because you know a bad locksmith gives a good locksmith a, a bad name you know all the all the bad guys out there you always hear about these scammers you know running around uh, you know they're ripping the customers off you know the the three hundred dollar door opening you know in a house and they, they what they wind up doing is drilling a you know the dead bolt of the doorknob off uh, you know there's a lot of people out there uh, you know that support uh, state licensing I personally don't at least in my state it's not necessary for what we do uh, to be a locksmith uh, I am, have a business permit and I have to apply for that to the the city so to me that's the, the layer of security that I need and the customer wants to know anything I have my uh, state ID and my business uh, ID number for my locality and so you know to have to pay an extra you know five hundred a thousand dollars to the state you know for licensing and and then there's extra extra requirements on top of that they they push you know like uh, CEUs and all that which I'm not against any of the extra training I think that's all good you know uh, by all means and you should do that and in the states where you know they got these uh, scammers on rampant I get it you know they, they try to do that to you know to, to control that but uh, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if a guy advertises, like me, I advertise locally in the Yellow Pages. Uh, people can get hold of me. Uh, I don't do emergency work, so I wind up not getting a lot of the, the emergency calls. Uh, you know, what they'll do is they'll uh, call me and leave a message. If I don't get back to them in time, they've already moved on to the next guy. That's how Yelp works, is it, uh, you know, the Yellow Pages ads. They automatically go to the next guy uh, or the first person that uh, you know replies to what they want. But and then I have customers that call me directly, and uh, and I have a separate cell that I use for my business because I don't want to have my personal cell put out there in the public domain. And, you know, for everyone, hey, that's locksmith, call him. You know, I do keep that as a business, keep it side. It's easier to write off that way for me. But anyways, I just kind of want to talk about that. Uh, you know, the code of ethics. I think uh, you know if you're going to get in the business of locksmithing. You know, you ought to understand uh, that there are certain rules, unspoken, untrained, uh, and I say unspoken, they are spoken. You know, at my association, we talk about that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, that's part of our oath. You know, we take a, you know, you know our membership uh, oath, you know, when we uh, sign up to be a member of, uh, like, with mine is the NKLA Association, Missouri Kansas Locksmith Association. We take an oath, you know, and that's kind of like that. Same thing. Maybe it's the same thing as what Lola does. I don't know. I haven't really looked it up, but uh, sorry for that noise. I was crunching plastic. But uh, anyways, I just kind of want to go over the the old code of ethics. You know the oaths. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet. People showing you stuff. Uh, you know, uh, you can see how to pick about any lock out there. Uh, I know that to me would be kind of a a violation of those oaths. Granted, you know, a lot of those people that do that, if they're a member of like Tool, uh, you know, the open organization of lock picking, lock pickers, uh, uh, those are people that uh, they uh, they know what they're not supposed to do, and you know, they're supposed to own the lock themselves. It shouldn't be on any you know secure premises. There, there's rules they follow too, uh, and a lot of them will say that, you know. But uh, there's a code of ethics, and then, and the number one thing for me is to protect the customer, you know. I don't share information about my customers, uh, the locks I do, the key bidding, any of that stuff. Uh, I do explain to my customer if they need a spare key, how they can, uh, you know, look it up and, and let me know, and you know, we can get them a key maybe without having someone drill their locks out. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always very cautious with how I deal with my customers. And a lot of locksmiths, uh, aside from the business insurance they have, uh, there's bonding that, that they have too, which uh, bonding just protects the customer from any. Uh, any bad thing that uh, a locksmith might have done, you know, whether intentional or accidental. But uh, I'm just wandering around in here. But uh, anyways, yep, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over with. I don't know if you see, I got my solar panel up on the top there. Finally put it up on there. Yeah, I'm trying to run these wires through here. I have my inverter, my charge control you see over there hooked up and then I'll be able to start running some of my key machines everything in my cargo van out there will go into this so they actually have all going here and to some degree it'll be modular enough where I can throw it in the back of my truck if I need to drive long distances I'm not going to drive this bread truck 
super far. But anyways, I want to thank you all for watching. I just wanted to kind of throw this video in there uh, about locksmithing, uh, the, the craft, the art, you know, the, the you know the how it works uh, as far as you know the the personality type, uh, you know, of if you're committing to this kind of a, a craft, uh, a job or a trade, uh, then you want to keep those. Uh, those uh, things in mind, and I'll try to copy paste uh, the bottom uh, bottom Maris. Uh, God, I can't even say it today. I, I just got been working on. I haven't any copy of the, the Saint Bottom Maris Oath. That's it, and it's a patron saint of locksmiths. So, good to talk to y'all. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to y'all later. Bye bye.